Hello again. Uh, continuing about the AC that has no cold air, not blowing cold air. Uh, yesterday I received emails about uh, some confusion that they said the schematic is hard to understand. I'm going to go over it and I'm going to go over some few details that I did leave out. Uh, first of all, we said you have to understand in this situation, a computerized fuel ejection car, there's a computer involved. It, without the schematic, you would not know the computer is involved. The computer receives the signal from you, the driver or the passenger, I need, I need cold air. That's done by the switch, this switch over here, which is on the dashboard. You select which one you want. That's a request, seen as a request to the PCM, to the computer. Those two things are based on two things that the computer needs to activate the clutch, to engage the clutch. First of all, like I said, if you don't have cold air, you have, let's say, warm air, obviously. Factors involved, we'll go over it again. First thing that I do is I put on defroster to see if the compressor comes on for defroster for the front wind, uh, windshield. If it does, that might mean I could have maybe a switch problem that's stuck or an actuator problem, which is <clears throat> pretty popular with GMs for some reason. And the actuator, uh, air temperature actuator is this one, a servo amplifier motor, which opens and closes the flaps and the, and the doors <clears throat> to allow the flow of air. So let's understand the difference. Air conditioning system produces the cold. The actuator or the blend door, uh, blend door actuator is the one that controls the air flow. <clears throat> Doesn't produce it, it controls it. Two different things. <clears throat> so we have now, we don't have cold air, obviously. We went over here, this was no problem. We put on defroster, no cold air and defroster either. Uh, now, what's the next thing we do? We look at the clutch to see if the clutch is turning, if it was engaged. We see it's not turning. We think it's an electrical problem. Now, how do you, how do you, what's the first step? Like I said before, first understand it again. This needs inputs from a low pressure switch and a high pressure switch. It needs this to determine if it can give an output, in this case, to ground the relay, which will turn on the clutch. It will only do it when it's safe to do so. These are safety valves, I refer to them. If they trip, that means it opens the circuit. That means you have your low pressure is too low. If this one trips, your high pressure is too high. What's high? For this vehicle's 450 PSI will open it. It will trip, let's say. For this one, five PSI, sometimes maybe 10 PSI, depending on the model. Anyway, so the normal is around 25 to 250 PSI for low and high. But let's say over here, we have the fact that you, if you don't know anything about computers or schematics, you have a, a, a line of circuit going through this. You have another line going through the computer. Without knowing anything about computers or schematics, when you see a line, a connection of something going to the computer, that means the computer is looking for something. It's looking for data, it's looking for information to take that and to control something else. So to me, this is an input. This low pressure switch tells it it's a safety valve. It is safe to this for, for the low pressure side and it is safe on the high pressure side. You can't be too low, you can't be too high. Now, receive questions, that's why I did this video. When you, have, when you go and you buy that refrigerant and it has the gauge on it, <clears throat> obviously you put on the low pressure side, it will only fit on the low pressure side, it has a gauge on it. The mistake that many people do does, you have to measure the high pressure side. It is incumbent and it is necessary. You cannot just put the gauge on the low pressure side, recharge the system and think it, it's, it's good. No, you have to measure the high, right? You don't know how high the high pressure is before you recharged it. Maybe it was 350, maybe it was 400, who knows? By you putting in more refrigerant, it'll do more damage. <clears throat> so what do you do? Like I said, 
you measure the low pressure side and you measure the high pressure side. Now, a question was asked, no problem, Joseph, no worries. If the pressure is too high, won't this trip, the high pressure switch trip, it'll open the circuit and nothing will go to the computer. Yeah, that's if this is working. Let's say the high pressure switch is defective. We don't know what's working, what's defective, what the co defective component is. Remember, we're troubleshooting. So therefore, if this is defective, guess what? Instead of opening, this will be closed all the time. It will let the refrigerant circul cir circulate all the time until the components just the, uh, um, become defective, <clears throat> right? So what should we do now? What I'm saying is, you have to assume maybe this is the defective part. And as a protection, don't, don't rely that this is working until you do measurements. Okay, I hope you understand that. Number two, how do we know that this is a, a signal? We say the computer received a signal from the driver with the switch. And, and also... It gets the input knowing that the low pressure switch is good. Everything is safe on the low side. Everything is safe on the high side. That input, that's inputs. Now the output is controlled by this. So now this flips the switch. This is grounded. This is called the AC compressor clutch relay. That means it grounds this, energizes this, closes this, and voila. Compressor turns on. The engages the, the clutch. And you get cold air. Now, <clears throat> you know on a working system, when you go to the compressor on the low side, it's cold. When you go to the high side, it is warm, right? You're compressing the vapor to a higher pressure. Then it gets condensed. Sometimes if it's too much on the accumulator, which is like the silver can, you can see it gets wet. It's condensation. So, but that's in a working system. If it's not working, you won't see you won't see that and you won't be able to feel it. Like I said before, how do we tackle this? First thing is I go and I say, is the clutch engaged? Vis vi uh, visually, I can see that. I don't have to measure thing yet. What would I do? What's my point of attack? Remember, we said could be the servo, the actuator it could be. That's why it's always uh, warm air. It could be that also. Again, you have to see if some vents have the cold air. Other vents don't. If all the vents don't have it, obviously you're not producing the cold air or the actuator might be stuck on on this one, on the frost, but usually, and you'll get it from the frost. Or you might not get it at all. Might not get it at all. So keep that one in mind. This one, this one is prone to this one is prone to have problems with the GMs now I'm gonna go the my point of attack is you know where I'm gonna go I'm gonna go right here AC compressor clutch there's a connector here see there's a connector this little thing here there's a connector here I'm gonna take off this one and I'm sure how much should I measure 12 volts I put my meter over here put my negative to ground across it I want to measure 12 volts if I measure 12 volts what does that tell you with one measurement, watch, it'll tell you everything is working. How? 12 volts here means what? This is activated. Why is this activated? Because this is activated. What activated this? Him, the computer activated this. Why did the computer activate this? Because this was activated correctly, this was activated correctly, and they received a request from the passenger or the driver for cold air with one shot 12 volts that tells me all this is working the computer is working these these are working this is working time for a new clutch or compressor now if you have a, a scanner the scanner will tell you an ac request signal that you have a request signal it will tell you that yes or no and will tell you if it controlled the clutch relay either yes or no but most people don't have scanners so the measurements that i would do let's say this is zero volts zero volts is not the compressor that means this is not activated or there's a problem then i come over here and i see if this was grounded if 
this was grounded and there's a way to measure like I'll show you one time in a video how to measure relays in circuit do not take relays out you have to measure things in circuit there is a total difference between a load between components in circuit and com taking components out and taking a power probe and measuring power and applying power that's to me that's nonsense you have to measure with components in the circuit that's the the real accurate measurements now if there is zero volts over here that means you know what this the computer is working all of this is working the request was was initiated by the computer we go with concentrate on the relay so first thing is first go to the to the clutch do i get 12 volts if i get 12 volts call the customer hey either clutch or a compressor whatever it is right now these do go bad low pressure switches go bad high pressure switches go bad of course if you have zero volts come over here make sure you have 12 volts over here you have 12 volts over here come back up make sure this is energized make sure i have 12 volts over here at the fuse then the difficult part is to make sure you have zero volts from the computer and instead of going over here to the computer itself you could go to the relay like i said i will show you and demonstrate new new techniques how to troubleshoot the techniques that i have i when i before i started in automotive i was an electronics technician and i learned electronics well and i came up with my own techniques that i saw can help the industry so the techniques that i do are very very informative very helpful however you have to understand schematics well if you understand schematics well you won't understand what i'm doing if you do not understand you might get lost totally lost that's how my techniques are that's why i stress schematics i stress 12 volts here how much should i measure here 12 volts that's absolutely measurements so again try to pay attention to that thank you for the subscribers i've been doing it for a year and a half um, if every subscriber of a thousand subscribers would watch 15 minutes a week of video, that's 15,000 a week for a month. That's 60,000 minutes. That would really help me a lot with this channel. R really. Uh, like I said, I want to first do the, the, this, and then you'll see the hands on. This will not make sense until you see the hands on, but I have to have some views to show at least some interest then you'll see techniques that you never saw before even about batteries testing the simplest things you will learn i'm sure you will learn a lot but first thing is first you have to understand the concept like i said to uh, an email before you become doctors you have to know how the body works and the symptoms the, the systems and the parts of the body then you go and you diagnose with an internship you cannot diagnose if you don't know how the systems work the respiratory the um, circulatory all these resp respiratory um uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, I've got the other systems are amazing, but uh, what's it called? Um, if you have to know the systems, then you diagnose as a doctor, correct? Um, now, the other thing is always pay attention when you have a connector, take out the connector. And I told you before yesterday, do not jump low pressure switch and high pressure switch. If you want to jump somewhere, you know what? Jump the relay. But which part of the relay? Don't jump this part. You'll cause a short to ground. Jump the switch. Right? Jump the switch if you have to. Anyway. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this cleared up of, uh, some technicalities and some questions that you had. Remember, do not rely on just the low pressure. Those refrigerants that you buy from AutoZone, Harbor Freight, whatever, wherever you get it, advanced auto parts, wherever it is, measure the high pressure side. I know some people say we don't have a gauge to measure the high pressure side. We don't know how much we should measure on the high pressure side, right? First thing is first, see if you have any cold air in any of the system, the frost or anywhere, okay? Then concentrate on the clutch. Say, do I have 12 volts to the clutch? Work your way back. If you have zero volts, work your way back here okay all right anyway thanks for watching and like i said i hope to do videos hands-on but it depends on if i have views of interest more people are interested in in, in the videos thank you